जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ गिरी बरद हारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ गिरी बरद हारी यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना जामुना चीरा बन चारी जामुना चीरा बन चारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन्ना वल्ला गिरी वरद हारी यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना चीर बन छारी जय राध माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन्ना वल्लभ गिरी बरद हारी यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना जामुना चीर बन छारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे So this is the best time of the year and not because it's summer. We just had the wonderful appearance day of Lord Balaram who is here in this temple. Lord Balaram ki jai. He is Krishna's first expansion and his elder brother. Hmm. Interesting. for another lecture some other time so this week we will celebrate the most special day sri krishna janmashtami on friday and in our movement we're so lucky that the next day is the appearance day of our beloved spiritual master ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad without whom none of this would have been possible but it did happen it's history and here we are 
So I'd like to speak tonight something from Srimad Bhagavatam, the science of God. I love saying that. I, I'll never get tired of saying science of God. Especially because one time I was preaching in Cal State LA and one lady objected. How you can say science of God? Science means biology, chemistry, this, I said, no, science means you follow a procedure and you get a predictable result. So throughout uh, Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, throughout Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada says it's a science. If you follow the instructions of Krishna as they are given in Bhagavad Gita, you will get the result. And according to Lord Chaitanya is also here, that result is love of God. We are not uh, seeking material benefits. No. Because we learn from Bhagavad Gita, material benefits are limited and temporary. And no intelligent person wants something limited and temporary. The Bhagavad Gita very clearly says that this Science of Krishna Consciousness is everlasting. It's unlimited and joyfully performed. All the different activities of this Krishna Consciousness move, even the fasting is joyfully performed. So in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which has 12 cantos, the author, Srila Vyasadeva, he has strategically place the subject matters, 10 subject matters, throughout the 12 cantos. That 10th subject matter is called the summum bonum, the ultimate good, the topmost benefit. It is in the 10th canto that we hear and read about Krishna's appearance here on earth for many of you in your home country of India 5,000 years ago it's not a story it's history 5,000 years ago Krishna was on this earth but Vyasadeva takes nine cantos to prepare you for understanding Krishna because Krishna's pastimes are bewildering and if not understood scientifically, the tendency is to misunderstand. We hear in Bhagavad Gita, Janma karma chame divyam, evam yobeti tatpataha, tyakva dehang purnar janma, naiti mameti sorjuna. Krishna says, if you can understand factually my birth, and my activities, then you're not coming back again to take birth. You go to my abode. And Krishna's abode is called Vaikuntha, the place where there's no anxiety. Even though San Diego is perhaps one of the nicest places to be in California, it's not without its anxieties. Nowhere you can go in this material world, top to bottom, there's going to be some anxiety. But Krishna's abode, Vaikuntha, is without anxiety. And that's where I want to go. Who wants to go to that abode? So Krishna says, you simply have to understand scientifically my birth and activities. And that is described in 10th canto. But Vyasadeva prepares you in nine cantos so that you understand all the different categories of Krishna. So in the very last chapter before the 10th canto, the 24th chapter of the 9th canto, it's entitled, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
And in that chapter, uh, Shukadeva Goswami explains to Maharaj Parikshit the ancestry of Krishna, all of his forefathers. It's a long list of wonderful personalities. And it ends with where it says that Krishna's father Vasudev, he had nine children. Six sons were killed by Kamsa. The seventh son was transferred from Vasudev's wife Devaki to Vasudev's other wife Rohini. That's a mystic transcendental process. Then the eighth child, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then the ninth child, Subhadra, who's also here in this temple. So, after giving Krishna's lineage, the final section of this ninth canto, Shukadeva Goswami gives you a synopsis of what's going to, it's like a preview of that 10th canto. Now we won't cover all the verses because that would take a couple of hours. But we'll start and hopefully we will relish some nectar. This Srimad Bhagavatam is drunk like nectar. You drink nectar. But this nectar is drunk through your ears. And my job is to pour the nectar into your ears. If you're ready, repeat after me. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. I think it would be appropriate since it's Srimad Bhagavatam that we chant the sacred 12 syllable mantra. Hare Krishna is 32 syllables, but there's an easy one, just 12 syllables. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Obeisances to the all-pervading Supreme Personality of Godhead Vasudeva Everybody say Badri told me he's coming at some point So he sent me I was amazed he sent me a text message I will come but I'll be a little late I said you don't have to explain yourself to me. So, here's, and Badri insists that I bring, it's not working, wait a second. Got to have it working before he comes. Uh-oh. Krishna is not sanctioned. Everybody chant Hare Krishna. Come on, chant. See? Not working. Krishna has a plan. Okay, so Shukadeva Goswami is preparing Maharaj Pariksit for the 10th canto. So this first verse. Whenever the principles of religion deteriorate and the principles of irreligion increase, the supreme controller, the personality of Godhead, Sri Hari, appears by, uh, by his own will. So there's a lot here. This verse is very similar to verses you'll find in Bhagavad Gita. So there are several reasons why Krishna will come to earth. Ah. So here he gives two reasons why. Religious, religion has decreased. Just like this week, there was a big stock market scare. 
the stock market plunged. People were freaking out. <laughs> so religion is like that. Sometimes religion deteriorates and that means that irreligion has increased. So when that happens, God comes. People ask the question, so what about now? We need God right now. Things are so horrible. Yes, God has come. Is He not here in this temple? Or are we worshiping idols? Who's worshiping idols? Who's worshiping God? Good. This bell ain't worshiping, that's for sure. Yes, we're not worshiping idols, we're worshiping God. But even still, God has appeared. There it is, on the top. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. That is God. That is God descended in the day and age to wipe out irreligion. Now, the next thing appears by his own will. Yes. Nobody can force God to do anything. Nobody. You and I, we're forced to do things by, for so many reasons. But God is, we learn in the very first verse of Bhagavatam, Swarat. Everybody say that. It means fully independent. Fully. We're not fully independent. We have what is called minute independence. But Krishna's independence is absolutely...